Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the functions of life, which are essentially the requirements that cells need to fulfill in order to be considered cells, okay, or be considered living. Okay, so there are seven different functions of life, and you have to be able to remember these. Now, in biology, it's always useful to have mnemonics that break down or that help you memorize content, okay? And there's quite a good mnemonic for the functions of life. So when you think about the functions of life, you're going to remember a person called Mr. H. Gren, okay? Mr. H. Gren. So it's someone with the, with the last name Gren, and then they have like a first name of H, right? Okay, so Mr. H. Gren. So what are the different functions of life? They are metabolism, response, homeostasis, growth, reproduction, excretion, and nutrition. Okay, so if something is considered living, it must be able to do all of these different functions to some degree. You have to be able to understand what each of these different functions are. So let's just go through them individually. So metabolism, that's the ability to carry out enzymatic reactions or chemical reactions in a cell. Okay, so one example of this might be cell respiration or photosynthesis. Okay, so any types of, there has to be some form of chemistry going on inside of these, these cells in order for them to be considered living. Okay, they also have to be able to respond. So that means to be able to, to some extent, it react to environmental stimuli. Okay, so a classic example would be if I have a cell and I shine light on it from one side, okay, does something change and does the cell move? Does the cell shift towards it, right? If I apply temperature, does it move as well away from that temperature, right? So if I do something to the cell, does it to some degree react to that? Homeostasis, this is the ability to um, maintain relatively constant internal environments, right? We're going to talk a lot about homeostasis in topic six, but essentially it means that you can you maintain a narrow range of different variables. Growth, pretty straightforward. Things have to be able to grow from small to large. Reproduction, so you have to be able to produce offspring, right? Because we mentioned previously in the last video that all cells come from pre-existing cells, right? So if, if, if a cell can't produce offspring, is it really living? Mm, not really. Um, it has to be able to perform excretion, so that's to remove all of its waste products. And then finally, it has to be able to obtain nutrition, okay? So that's, that's the ability to exchange materials and gases with the environment, right? So if, if for example, we need glucose and oxygen, right, to do cell respiration, um, so we need to be able to, to get these materials into our cell in order for, 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 um, for them to be considered living. Okay, so remember those different functions and give a bit brief explanation of what each of those mean. Fine, then what you also have to be able to do is apply these functions of life to par the paramecium, which is a unicellular organism and one named photosynthetic organism, okay? So let's first talk about the paramecium, okay? So we said that in order for something to be alive, it has to be able to perform these seven different functions. And the paramecium is a unicellular organism. So it is an entire organism composed of just one cell. So it's unicellular, there we go. Um, and it is also what we call a heterotroph. Now, if you're just going starting off biology, um, you probably don't know what that means yet, but essentially all it means is that it obtains its food or its nutrients by getting them from somewhere else, okay? So that's mainly to distinguish it from, from an organism that makes its own food, okay? So something like that can do photosynthesis and generate its own sugars. It has to get it from somewhere else. So you have to be able to describe how these functions of life apply to the paramecium. So it performs metabolism by engulfing food with in vacuoles with digestive enzymes, okay? So that's, that's some kind of a digestive process of chemical reactions, right? So that's metabolism. Um, it can respond because it has these cilia on its surface um, that you can just barely see in this image, and that allows it to move but depending on the environment. Homeostasis, okay, so it, it can regulate CO2 and oxygen levels by allowing the, the, the nutrients to diffuse in and out of the cell. Growth, so the paramecium grows. Um, reproduction, so it can perform something called binary fission, and um, we'll talk about that later in the topic as well. That's essentially just where the paramecium is just going to get longer and longer and longer until eventually it divides into two, okay? So it kind of just stretches apart until eventually it splits into two cells. That's how it reproduces. Um, excre excretion, it has this, this thing called an anal pore, okay? So where it can get rid of solids, that's how it gets rid of its waste products. 
um, and it can pump out uh, liquid waste um, in vacuoles. Okay, so just remember that. And then finally, how does it get its nutrients? Well, it engulfs its food via cytosome, right? So we said that heterotrophs have to get its nutrients for someone else, somewhere else, right? So the, the way that works is that the, the food kind of just comes into contact with the paramecium and then it's kind of absorbed into these structures that we call vesicles. Now we'll go into the details of what exactly that means later on. For now, just you just have to remember a brief explanation of how the functions of life can be applied to the paramecium organism. And you also have to be able to apply the functions of life to an autotrophic um, organ, unicellular organism. Okay, so autotroph is something that makes its own nutrients, right? We said that previously. And you can actually choose which organism you want to choose for this. Um, the Scandesmus is recommended in the guidance of the syllabus. So that's the one that I've gone with here. So let's just have a look at how the functions of life apply. Um, in terms of metabolism, the uh, chemical reactions happen by through this pigment called chlorophyll in the scandesmus, and it's able to produce organic molecules, right? So that's photosynthesis, right? We'll talk a more, lot more about this later on. Response, so the scandesmus can form colonies uh, to protect itself from uh, external stimuli. Uh, homeostasis, again, we have this CO2 and this oxygen reg regulation via diffusion. So because we're maintaining a narrow range, that's homeostasis. Growth, the cell just grows. That's one pretty easy. Reproduction, so it forms these things called autospores uh, by an internal asexual division. Now, you don't have to know that much about what exactly this means. I think if you just kind of commit this word autospores to memory, that's probably going to be what they're looking for in the mark scheme. Um, excretion, so the waste can simply diffuse out of the scandesmus plant, and nutrition, the nutrients simply diffuse in. Okay, so those are relatively straightforward to remember. So the key points to this to take from this video is that you have to remember the seven different functions of life as well as what each of those mean, right? That's down here. And you have to know how these can apply to two unicellular organisms, so organisms made of one cell, one that is autotrophic and one that is heterotrophic. Okay, so I hope that made sense.